All right, well, about one minute. That's all it can take to use your smartphone to rent one of the thousands of electric scooters that are popping up across our area. But some are warning riders out there to take more time to read the fine print before hopping on one. NBC6 investigator Dan Kraft continues our coverage into e-scooter accidents with more on what to watch out for. Thousands of people ride e-scooters in our area without any problems. But as we showed you last night, more than 100 accidents have happened. And when they do, what you agree to before riding could limit the action you can take after. From underage kids caught on camera riding them to adults weaving in and out of traffic. You look fresh. You okay, babes? E-scooters are something mom Tracy Jordan can't stand to look at. I instantly turn away, look away, and then I think about her. Her daughter Ashanti was working as a security guard at Broward Health Medical Center when she rented an e-scooter to get home from work. She collided with a car. It's dangerous, like life-threatening. Paramedics rushed Ashanti to the hospital she had just left. And this is where she has remained for the past seven months. I want you to know mommy's here. Her family says she doesn't have health insurance, and so far, her bills total more than a million dollars. I don't want no one else to care for her besides me. So that gives me the push that I need in order to stay strong. Before you can activate a scooter, you have to agree to the company's user agreement on your cell phone by clicking on a box. If you'd actually print out what it is you are agreeing to, Take a look, a lot of paper, a lot of reading. It totals more than 50 pages long. And attorneys say it's important to read the fine print. It's terribly unfair to the consumer. The family hired attorney Todd Falzone. They're suing the company to try and get money for her medical expenses. It's going to be hundreds of screens long on a cell phone to try to read and understand the terms and conditions. By clicking the box, the user agrees the company reserves the right to hold you, the writer, fully responsible for all damage, losses, claims, and liability. All scooter companies have user agreements, and most have similar wording. Almost no consumers fully understand what that means. In Ashanti's case, police say she was hit in an intersection when she ran a stop sign. But Felzone says it's the company that instructed her to ride in the street where scooters aren't allowed. She did what the app told her to do and she was in the road. He claims this diagram popped up in the app on Ashanti's smartphone instructing her not to ride on the sidewalk. Shortly thereafter, they altered it. They changed the app. This screen now shows up on renting a scooter in Fort Lauderdale, instructing riders to use sidewalks only. The company told us it doesn't comment on pending litigation. It did say safety is paramount at Lyme, which is why they've rolled out a range of initiatives aimed at providing a safer environment for scooter riders. I know you can't wait to come home. Safety is something Tracy says she wants for all riders, as she's hoping to move her daughter home soon to hospice care, where she will most likely remain for the rest of her life. You just can't wake up, get on the e-scooter, and think you know how to ride it, and it's going to be okay. It's not. As part of the user agreement, if you have a dispute, it has to be heard by an arbitrator as opposed to a judge or jury. For more on how many accidents have happened in our area and the laws in different cities, head to NBC6.com and search for e-scooter. Dan Krauth, NBC6 News.